I know, it doesn't feel right, does it? Putting the words don't want so close to the next Elder Scrolls title. I, I promise I do it out of love. And now that we have an official teaser trailer for the game, well, it's easy to get wrapped up in excitement. But we shouldn't let that cloud our judgment. There are certainly things that can be improved. And, well, if they are, this could truly be the best Elder Scrolls yet. So today, I wanted to list five things we don't want from the Elder Scrolls 6. Let's get into it. Starting off with number five, same combat as before, right? We don't want the same combat. Now, this isn't to say that we need an entirely new system. We just want at least for what we've got to be improved, right? As it stands, it's very simple, and it allows gamers of all experience to just quickly join in, quickly use it to explore the world. That's the focus, right? Exploring the world. It's not really worrying how to fight. If you've got a complicated system where there's, you know, 20 different directions that you can block just one attack, well, chances are there are people who are going to, to be intimidated by that and then stop playing. And the creators don't want that. Now, if you're someone who would like a whole new system, a more advanced system, I, I, I definitely feel you. But it seems Bethesda has purposely stayed clear of this, and, well, that's a creative decision on their part, and that's okay. That said, the combat doesn't have to be boring, right? It's still, it just feels a bit weightless. If you're holding a two-handed axe and you swing it down, you should feel that force all the way down to your feet. So maybe, maybe have your stance go off kilter a bit. That's actually something that I've noticed is that your lower body doesn't really feel like it's being used. Your upper body's okay, but it should feel a bit more than that still. Um, if you're holding a staff in your right hand that's got a stream of lightning coming out, well, have your character sort of dip down on that side, right? Sort of curl in as if holding that thing has just become a lot heavier because there's so much force coming out of it, and now you're really working to keep it raised. That's, that's something that could really add dynamic. Um, if you're holding a shield, let it respond differently depending on where exactly it got hit to block the attack. You could also make hitboxes smaller so you have to be more accurate with where exactly you're swinging your sword to make that connect. So the idea is adding weight and dynamic to what we already have. That way you can advance the current system without scaring people away. Number four, easy. We don't want the game to be easy. Now, if you don't want to make a hardcore fighting game, kind of like what I already mentioned, that's fine, and I see the reasoning behind it, but that means the world exploring, then, should feel like a challenge. And I just, I, I really didn't feel a lot of that in Skyrim. So, puzzles, for, for example, that's probably the go-to for this one, but they were so easy. Like, oh, what animal do I choose? Let me just refer to the massive fish above my head. Oh, it's correct. It's kind of, it's kind of insulting. I, I think there was... I think there was one puzzle that I actually did really like. It was like, um, the first eats the second, and the second is afraid of the fourth, but not the third. It, it was something like that. It was a bunch of animals. But you had to figure out the correct order of these animals, and that was, it was a little bit harder. That, that was more fun. But then you fight your way to the end of the game to find out Alduin is the same battle as any other dragon. Right, yeah, you, you can increase the difficulty, but that just means that you have to hit him more and probably pop a few more potions, right? The, the mechanics don't get advanced in any way. I mean, an enemy like that should have us on our toes. Maybe we have to die a few times, right? Before we learn what their weakness is. And then it's like, ah, okay. Now I know what to exploit. Um, also, it doesn't need to become a survival game because we're already going to have mods to do that. But maybe when you're up in the snowy mountains, you get a debuff because it's so cold, right? Like when it's winter and someone hits you in the ear. So damn painful. So maybe your character takes a little more damage when he's in an area like that. Um, if you've been popping healing potions, maybe have their effectiveness go down, right? It gets less and less for a certain amount of time so that you don't have an unfair advantage and you can just keep popping these things one after the other. Now, these are all ways of adding difficulty and thus a greater sense of accomplishment without totally changing the fabric of the game. Number three, an unaffected world. We don't want the world to seem unresponsive to our actions. Now, you know, maybe this one doesn't really need as much worrying, uh, because it does, it seems to get better and better with each new game, but I think it still is a way to go. So, like, after killing Alduin, who's literally nicknamed the World Eater, it'd be nice to have more than one guard come up to you and say, Hey, you, uh, you killed that dragon, right? Well, that was nice of you. Thanks, dude. And then you talk to him immediately after, and he's like, What? What could you possibly want from me? Keep your answer to yourself, thief. <laughs> it'd, it'd be nice to get more than just a random amalgamation of reactions from the local guard. So, you know, maybe you're talking with a shopkeeper, and they're like, Hey, by, by the way, if you, if, you do, if you want a discount on this shirt, just let me know. Because honestly, it was really incredible what you did stopping that dragon. 
It's just something tiny but effective. Uh, maybe you're walking back into town and all the townsfolk have thrown a surprise party for you at random. And there's, you know, there's ribbons and fireworks and, like, fun festivities. Um, what else? Maybe you clear out a dungeon of bandits, okay? You leave, they respawn, you come back, but now they've got a whole new set of defenses, right? Like, they learned from their failures at the start, and now they've got barricades set up, or they've got traps that weren't there the first time. It actually makes replayability a lot more fun, too. Um, maybe you become the leader of the Thieves' Guild, or, or any guild, instead of just your peers saying, oh, hey boss, hey boss, and that's it, now there are more guards within each city, and they've got a whole new pattern of walking and guarding the, guarding the place, like they've got a closer eye on each of the houses, because now they're thinking, well, new leadership among the thieves, crime is going to skyrocket, right? Let's make sure we're focusing on what really matters, people's belongings, and so forth, right? Just the world responding to what you do. So we, did, we saw a decent amount of it in Skyrim, but now we want it to go even further. Number two, little variation, right? We want there to be as much variation as possible. Uh, now, as far as weapons go, we've actually seen a continual drop in options since the game Morrowind. Like, back then, back then we had throwing knives, darts, uh, spears, halberds. Who wouldn't want that to be, to be an option? It's only going to add to your character's customization. Like, it, it would be really cool to be playing a rogue who, in one hand, you're holding throwing knives, and you can use those as a projectile, but then in the other, you're holding a knife, so you can quickly run in to finish the kill right after throwing the knife. So the speed is much better rather than having to like freeze the game so that you can switch from your bow back to your daggers. You know, it kind of kills the momentum. Um, another thing is enemy variation. So whether you're attacking a Falmer or a bear or a bandit or even a dragon once it's, it's uh, been grounded, it's the same exact fight. Keep swinging at its face until it dies and you know, hopefully you took as little damage as possible. Boom. Instead, make each enemy have their own set of tactics, okay? So if you're attacking that bear, let that thing charge you and bring you to the ground, force you down. And then you have to swing up at its face or to the side at its paws so that, you know, it'll get off you. Um, if you're fighting a dragon or just another kind of flying monster, well, screw dragon rend. Don't go easy. Let it terrorize you from the skies so that you're forced into a ranged battle. And, you know, if you're not good with a bow and arrow or uh, magic in, in, as a substitute, then you have to flee and make sure it doesn't just set your ass on fire on your way out. Don't make it easy. Uh, maybe there's a field of high grass, and if you're in it for too long, then there's like a swarm of snakes that chase you and bite at your feet, and then you have to either run out, you know, find an exit, or find some rock to jump on while they all collect below you. It's kind of like tremors. Um, you know, these are all ways of adding different stimulation to the game and different tactics from your enemies so that you can have just more unique experiences, especially depending on what weapons and armor you're using, as well as the type of enemy that you're battling. And number one, same dialogue system. Yeah, we, we don't want to see the same limitations when it comes to dialogue. You know, for some, for, uh, for some reason, it's the Fallout games that seem to get the special treatment when it comes to this area. And then, like, the Elder Scrolls, they sort of get less of that. Like, like what you say has less to do with influencing someone else's mind than it does just listening to what they have to say. Right? Like in Skyrim, that's really all it is. It's just a tool to get more info on the NPC that you happen to be speaking with. Not nearly enough are you able to change the outcome of a quest because of what you said. Or even just how someone might feel about you depending on what you say to them. Um, I think that's one of the reasons people really liked Fallout New Vegas. It was like they, they felt like they had that freedom with the direction of a conversation. And when you feel that control, you're really, you're a lot more likely to pay attention to what's being said, you know, not just skip through it. Um, now, I know there's been an effort to bring voiced protagonists into the recent Bethesda games, sort of personalize it and make it more interesting, and a lot of people, they've got no problem with that, but I don't think that's the most important thing. I think, first and foremost, people want to be able to manipulate a conversation depending on how they're feeling and who they're talking to, right? Give us those different options. When my wife comes home looking sad because all I ever do is ask her how much money the store has made, well, I want to be able to instead take her in my arms and say, Honey, I'm sorry. Right, it's not about the money, really. Lately, lately, I've just I've felt like. Oh, hey, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> and there you have it. Five things we don't want from the Elder Scrolls Six. If you enjoyed the video, please like, comment, and subscribe. And down below, please tell me what else would you add to this list. And is there something else you would change about what I've said? 
All right, thank you very much for watching. Uh, oh, and we also, we don't need the third volume of The Lusty Argonian Maid because that's actually already been done. Yeah, I'll put, um, I'll put that as the card to this video. So you just have to click on that if you, you know, if you want to watch it. It's, uh, I don't know, it's up to you if you're feeling weird. I watched it this morning. I was actually really embarrassed that I made it. Like, it made me cringe really bad. What?